What's up, you two? Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Blue Fishing Channel. So, as you guys can see, the Florida series is finally over. Welcome back to the tundra. <laughs> yeah, we are back here in Pennsylvania. As you guys can see, we are back in the coldness of the winter. We got snow here in PA, you know. But the thing is, you know, before I can finalize this Florida series, you guys gotta understand, right, that you really haven't seen everything that I have to offer yet. In the previous video here on the channel, I believe that we stopped at 35 or 36 different species of fish down in Florida. But the truth is, I actually caught 40 plus species during, during that Florida trip, you know? So in this video, this is the legit last Florida video. We're going to do a little recap in this video. I'm going to talk about three things. First one, we're going to do a summary of all the different species of fish that we caught down in Florida during this three-day period. Number two, I'm going to talk a little bit about safe fish handling skills for different species of fish down there in Florida. And number three, we're finally going to talk a little bit about fish identification when it comes to the different species down in Florida, okay? There's going to be plenty of tips, you know, for folks who are concerned about how to handle fish and how to identify them. So yeah, let's just get started with a little summary. I'm just checking my phone here just to make sure, you know, but uh, I think I, I'm right, you know, we caught more than 40 species of fish down there in three days. So before we talk about anything else, let's just do a quick summary of what we caught down there. We caught the blue striped grunt, pink fish, mangrove snapper, sailor's grunt, pork fish, frilfin goby, crested goby, checkered puffer great barracuda, tom tate, the slippery dick, the schoolmaster snapper, the dusky denzel fish, the hairy blenny, bluehead ross, sergeant major, bermuda chub, the spotted soapfish, dog snapper, black margate, white grunt, the small scale fat snook, butterfly peacock bass, largemouth bass, African jewelfish, eastern mosquito fish, Salvini cichlid, bluegill, inland silverside, yellowfin mohara, Irish mohara, scrawled countfish, smallmouth grunt, black ear ras, stoplight parrotfish, Antilles, Frilfin, we are at 36 species right over here, right? And that's when I stopped during my last video here on the channel. But after that, I actually fished the Boca Raton Inlet even further, you know? And I actually collected the following species of fish. We caught the red tail parrotfish, red band parrotfish, orange spotted filefish, the French grunt, and finally the plain filefish. Of all these different species of fish that I just gave you guys, right, let's see how many new species I actually added to my list, okay? Uh, Harry Blaney is one, spotted soapfish is two, dog snapper is three, a small scale fat snook is four, yellow mohara, that's five, Antilles frilfin, that's six, and plain filefish, that is seven, right? So 41 different species of fish with seven new species for my list, you know, which in my personal opinion is a very, very productive multi-species fishing trip for Fort Lauderdale area. Now that you guys know already about all the different species of fish that I caught down there, let's just briefly talk about safe fish handling skills. After I posted this last Flo Florida trip videos here on the channel, a lot of people on Instagram and the Snapchat and even in the YouTube comment section, they were pretty pissed at me, you know? 
for how I handled some of those fish. Uh, the main concern was that I kept most species of fish outside of the water for too long while filming and giving you guys all the information in the videos, right? And let me tell you something, when people come here to the channel and they tell me things like that, I actually commend them, you know? I, I, I don't get pissed, I don't get mad, because I understand that those people are the people that really, really care about the fish, you know? And personally, I feel that for this fishing trip, I didn't do the best that I could have possibly done when it comes to handling those fish, you know? One thing that you guys got to understand is that when you film for YouTube, right, or anything else, TV, anything, it's always got to take more of a toll on the fish, you know? If you're filming and photographing the fish, the fish are going to be outside of the water for a longer period of time, right? But that is not to say that you cannot do a better job than that. As a scientist, a life lister, you will always go out there and record a lot of data, you know? That doesn't mean that you are supposed to keep the fish outside of the water for that long amount of time, right? Otherwise, they get into a state of anoxia, lack of oxygen, and even if you release them, put them back in the water, in the long term, they die, right? So one item that it, that it was like fundamental for this fishing trip that I forgot up here in Pennsylvania was my photo tank. If you guys watch here, watch my videos here on the YouTube channel, you know that I have used this before, especially for micro fishing. I would say that 85% of the fishes that we caught down in Florida, we could have done a better job in handling them if we just had this photo tank with us, right? But when I was packing the stuff, you know, up here, I really, really forgot to include it in my bag. All that it would have taken is for me to put some salt water inside this, and as soon as I caught the fish, I don't even need to unhook it, right? Just put inside the photo tank. As far as they are inside the water, you can take your time collecting all the data that you need, taking photos, filming the video, giving the information and showing people, look, you know, this is the fish in the water. And even better, people can actually get a view of how the fish swims and the natural colors of the fish under the water, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is, in this series that I posted on the channel, the fish handling was definitely not 10 out of 10, okay? So if you go down to Florida and you do your multi-species fishing and you want to take good care of the fish, buy a photo tank, okay? I'll leave the hyperlink in the description of the video. Make sure you buy one of these because ultimately we are concerned about the safety of the fish that we catch, okay? It wasn't the best that I could have possibly done. I understand if you guys are mad at me, you know? I am a little bit of ashamed of myself, but you know, once I was down there, I just, I, cu I couldn't do it. I had to catch those fish, right? Photo tank, no photo tank, it's just like, you gotta get the job done. But needless to say, you know, make sure you don't torture your fish too much, okay? Buy a photo tank. Finally, the last thing that I want to talk about in this video is fish identification skills when it comes to fishes in Florida. And that is because, man, I get so many DMs on Instagram every day. People coming here on the channel requesting me to identify different species of fish, which usually, as you guys know, I try to get through each request, right? But I am just one person, so I can't do it all. You know what I'm saying? So let's talk a little bit about that. And during this fishing trip, you guys gotta realize, right? It was not easy to identify some of the species of fish that we caught down in Florida, you know? I mean, the last video itself, the name of the video is what exactly did we catch, you know? Like at the time when I just caught it, I had no idea. So I had to go back home and I had to hit the books. I had to ask my multi-species friends their opinions on the photos that I took so that we could see each species individually, right, analyze its key characteristics and finally identify what the heck is it that we really caught, you know? So I'll give you a, a, a few examples, okay? Uh, let's talk a little bit about that goby in the last video. That was probably the most difficult fish that, we, uh, that I identified down there in Florida, you know? There are so many different species of goby in the Western Atlantic it is crazy. 
So I went and I asked my friend Pat Kerwin, Patrick Kerwin, his Instagram is PMK00001 on Instagram. I asked him for some advice and thankfully Pat was able to offer me a research paper on the Bathygobius genus, which I pay was the genus of the fish that we caught. And uh, man, it was such a good paper. I read the whole research paper and the researchers who actually wrote the paper, they went through the trouble of collecting different species of gobies in the Western Atlantic, making sure that they wrote the research paper. It was a PhD thesis, right? So making sure they wrote the PhD paper there, you know, very, very nicely using that paper. I was finally able to come to the conclusion that the fish that I caught down there was, uh, was an Antilles frill fin, you know? It's got two rows of dots on its body. Downside, the row has only three to four blotches maximum, doesn't go all the way to the end. And one of the most important characteristics is at the basi caudal location, pretty much the, uh, around the tail, there are two dots, which is not a blotch, you know, two dots, one above the other, right? So this is one of the more extreme fish identifications that you can't really just purchase books out there and try to identify the fish. You need to go out of your way and actually read a lot about it. You need primary sources. You need the results of research that has been done in the field. Another example too, the parrotfish in the last video. What the heck was that parrotfish? You know, I, I analyzed parrotfish are already hard to identify because they have these things called phases, you know, which are stages of life where they change colors and patterns. So if you catch a juvenile a stoplight parrotfish, they may look a certain way, but once they grow all the way to adulthood, they look like so different, 100% different, you know? And after analyzing, checking with friends, we came to the conclusion that the parrotfish we caught was indeed a stoplight parrotfish in a transition stage. Can you believe it? It's not even like initial phase or like final phase, transition phase, you know? So when it comes to this type of identifications, I would like to point out, if you guys all like have trouble with it, right? First thing that you should do, rely on books, okay? Two books that I would really recommend for this type of identification, fishes in Florida. One is the Sport Fish of Florida, which was written by Vic Dunaway. And the other one is the Sport Fish of the Atlantic, also written by Vic Dunaway. These two books here, I use them a lot for fish identification, okay? This is not a sponsored video, by the way. This is really what I usually use. Another thing that I use a lot that is not really books, but it works really well, are these folding guides. I will leave all of this in the description of the video, okay? If you don't have one of these, get one, my friend, because this is good. EPF recommends, you know? So I got two examples here. One is Fishes of the Outer Banks. The other one's wreck and reef fishes of the Southeast Atlantic coast. You need one of these if you don't have it yet, okay? You open it up, check this out. This is laminated, waterproof, sand doesn't go in. You open it up, it's got all the different species over here with a description, the name, maximum size, how common they are, you know? It is really, really good stuff, okay? You can pack it very easily in your bag and they have different guides for different portions of the country. The best thing about it, they don't just portray game fish, you know? So all the different weird species that you can possibly find, they have it inside these guides, all right? Finally, if you have the books, you have the papers, you have the research papers, and you still can't find out about what exactly is it that you caught, that's when you should go ask your friends, you know? Or if you have friends in the community, just ask them to begin with, because someone out there who does multi-species will probably know what is it that you caught. But yes, there are certain species that are very easy. You just go to a friend, it's like, hey man, what exactly is this, you know? And the person just, he has caught before, he has seen before, he will just tell you, I know exactly what it is. There are other species like those go that goby from last video that you really need to do it yourself, you know? Go out of the way, read the papers, analyze everything, it takes time, okay? All right, now that we talked about everything, I think I covered everything that I wanted to talk about this Florida trip. Let's call this video, uh, let, let's call it, you know, this is the summary recap Florida fishing trip for February of 2018. 
I hope you guys enjoy the series. I'll keep bringing you guys plenty of videos on the channel. And don't worry, okay? Fish handling is got to be better. Multi-species is got to be better. We still got to be out there on the pursuit of new species of fish, okay? But for now, we're back to the tundra schedule, all right? So, Thai lines, folks, thank you very much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. I hope you guys gain some knowledge from it, okay? I'll see you guys next time. Dude, this is pretty legit. Okay, let's cast it out there. And, uh, dude, gotta be careful. I don't wanna lose any of these viewers. Ooh, almost went on the tree, dude. Let's just do a steady retrieve. <gasps> oh, boy. Do you guys see that? Dude. It glides. It glides. It glides left and right. Very, very nice action right here. 